This car is so small, I can literally fit it into the back of a pickup truck. And it can do a lot more than that. Find out all the things that it can do in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beeman G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at the cutest mod I have ever seen. This is the Ibishu Chisai, which is basically a Covet that is smaller in every single dimension, and it is adorable. So for comparison purposes, there's a Covet, and here's this guy, who is officially nicknamed Little Cheese, because he's yellow like cheese, and he's little. So putting him side by side, you can see he is smaller in every single dimension, except for maybe height compared to the Covet, and it's like Big Brother and Little Brother, ketchup and mustard. And ketchup and mustard has absolutely nothing to do with one being smaller than the other. You just have yellow next to red and that's what you think. And right now, we are flooring it as we climb up this hill. But with the 450cc diesel engine in this car, it only makes 25 horsepower. Although it does make 55 foot-pounds of torque, which we are definitely making use of just to climb these little hills. Climbing the hill will be worth it though because I want the first crash to be one very specific kind of crash. And thankfully, it'll be happening in about five seconds. So over to our right, you see that stairway? No, yes you do. You know what we're doing. We're gonna drive down the stairway with the little car and see what happens. Doing pretty good so far, bouncing around. Oh no, we're going sideways. And we're on our roof. Come on, get back on your wheels. Yay, no. Yay, we ended up on our wheels somehow, okay. All right, that wasn't too bad, was it? It's smoking a bit, but it should still drive. Yep, looks good. And we can go over to the COVID and be like, Big bro, I got beat up. And the COVID's like, who beat you up, little bro? The stairs. So now I imagine somehow the COVID is over trying to beat up the stairs. Don't know how, but that's what it's doing. And then me, I'm going to crash into these little blocks that are sitting on the ground. And that has ruined the vehicle because the front right axle is broken. So here's a look at the damage. And nothing looks too badly destroyed, we just hit it in an awkward way that destroyed the suspension so it could no longer drive. So let's go ahead and freshen him up and then we're going to take a look at the next configuration. So the 450cc diesel is available in manual and automatic. And then the most interesting 450cc diesel is the utility edition. So we go from having an adorable little car to an adorable little pickup truck. Although, do you really call this a pickup truck? It really is just a car with the rear end slashed off. So with this thing, what can we possibly put in the rear? How about one single rock? Literally just one rock into the rear and it is completely full. Although that is a very big rock. That is a 400 kilogram rock, which easily converts to 400 million milligrams, which still doesn't tell you how much it actually weighs. The actual weight is like 880 pounds. And we are flooring it up this hill and we are just topped out at 20 miles per hour. The good news is, is downhill is coming. And when we hit this downhill, we should get moving fast. So here we go, downhill, bam, 30 miles per hour. Keep going, 40 and up to 50. This should not be going this fast with this much weight in the rear, but we are gonna keep accelerating up to 60 miles per hour. And what are we gonna do? There's a corner coming up. Are we gonna take the corner? Nah, not really, we're just gonna go roughly in the direction of the corner and whatever happens happens in this case we flew and crashed into a tree the rock is gone but the car is still here so how is the car doing it might actually still be able to drive after we pull it off of this tree it is a little stuck though uh not actually gonna be able to drive because little cheese has its wheels stuck in the air but it can put down the power which is kind of surprising actually and here's a quick look at the damage before we do the reset and for this next car, let's not make it yellow this time. So this is going to be the 450cc diesel sport. This is the last diesel configuration of the vehicle. And there is one strange thing about this, because it has a diesel engine that's tuned up and it should be faster than the normal one. That is until you shift into second gear. So let me go ahead and demonstrate what I'm talking about. We're accelerating, doing good, doing good. Up, oh, time to shift, and the engine just explodes. Like, this did not just stall out. It literally says engine broken, and it does that every time for some reason. I don't know exactly what the cause of it is, but it's one of those things where it's so unusual, I just had to mention it because I've never seen something like that before. But as you see, once again, engine locked up and broken. Very strange. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the next version, which is the 
550cc which is available in manual or CVT. And I have to let you guys listen to what this actually sounds like because the small engine with the CVT transmission legitimately just sounds like a lawnmower. So have a listen. Yeah, that sounds like somebody who's trying to mow their lawn. All right, here we go. This is what it sounds like when somebody crashes trying to mow their lawn. Although you don't really get to hear it, you more get to see it. Ooh, is it gonna land on the road? Ah, oh, not quite. We almost made it. Can't see too much because of the trees, so let's just go ahead and do a little Yankee Yankee. There we are. So we got a big bump in that rear corner. The rest of the vehicle isn't too badly damaged. Can we accelerate it all? Nope, we are done. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next configuration. And this one is the 550cc turbo. So it's the exact same one we were just driving, but with the addition of a turbo. And the regular 550cc, it makes about 30 horsepower. This one with the turbo, it can do amazing flips like that because it has, wait for it, wait for it, 32 horsepower. The turbo literally only gives it two more horsepower than the normal version. It does give it a little bit of a bump in torque as well though. It goes from 37 foot-pounds to 44 foot-pounds. So that's more significant than the horsepower gains. And here we go. We're going to try to reach 60 miles per hour at all costs. I don't even know if we're going to reach it because we do have an uphill coming up. And this is also quite possibly the slowest turbocharged vehicle I have ever ever driven i seriously can't think of a car that is slower than this with a turbo on it but here we go come on 60 miles per hour achieved and then we're losing speed because the hill is too high so that is the car at its very limits so let's test the crashing limits i don't know that doesn't really make sense point is we're crashing the car and now we're gonna see how much damage it gets and of course somehow it ends up in the bushes so we can't really see it so let's go ahead and yank it out of the bushes a little bit and then we'll take a look at the damage. And one thing I like on this one is the wheels themselves are actually red behind the hubcaps, which is pretty neat. And here's a good look at those red wheels. And then we'll go ahead and bring it back up onto the road. And then take a look at the next version, which is going to be another utility. This one is the 660cc utility. And before I tell you about this one, let's go ahead and figure out what we want to put in the back of this thing. So let's do something a little bit different. How about we put a cannonball into the rear of the vehicle? The hard part is chasing the cannonball down after you shoot it. So come here, you. Gotcha. Nope. Gotcha. All right. And then we got to fling it all the way back over to the car, hopefully not hitting the car. Ooh, that was close. We got to get a little closer so we can get the camera lined up so we can see what we're doing. And then place it gently into the back like so. Excellent. So as I said, this is a 660 configuration. It's available in hatchback form with the automatic or manual. You have the utility one you see here. And then also there's a Japanese police version that has a little police paint job on it. Although I feel like if you arrest somebody with that vehicle, that's just mean to put them in the back seats because those seats look pretty small. Anyway, so far it's doing, whoa! Well, okay then. I guess the wall that goes between the bed of the truck and the interior is not that strong because the ball just rolled right through it without a care in the world. But you can see this engine is doing a pretty good job of carrying around a literal cannonball. It has 42 horsepower, which is a bit more than the 550cc we were driving earlier, but it has less torque at only 41 foot-pounds of torque. And even the handling is actually doing surprisingly well because the cannonball is in there sloshing about and it's going to really mess up the handling characteristics, I'm sure, but so far, I don't really have any complaints about it. Although, to be fair, I don't know if we've driven over 60 miles per hour. So here's the next question we're going to have. What happens when we crash it with a cannonball inside of the vehicle? I was going to say in the rear, but it's literally inside of it. And just kind of deflecting off the wall, so nothing too serious there. Although, oh, here's the serious part of the crash. Smashing into the ground, and we've lost the wheel. But I think the cannonball is still in there somehow. Let's get onto the wheels and take a peek. Are you in there, cannonball? Oh, yes, it is. I think I see it. Yep, 
there's the cannonball somehow still in there. And we got some pretty decent damage to this guy. The whole side has been smushed in a little bit. And he is done, not driving after that one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next configuration. This one is the 660cc turbo. This is the first one where the performance is starting to get there because this one has 61 horsepower and 59 foot-pounds of torque. Again, it doesn't sound like much, but it's a pretty lightweight car so you can get to zero to 60 in like 12 seconds. That's not a fast time, but with a car this small, you really get that I'm driving a go-kart kind of feel. This is just enough power to have that kind of feeling. All the ones before this, not quite powerful enough to actually feel like it's enjoyable to drive, but this one, it actually feels pretty good. And I don't get scared every time I see a hill. That's the most important thing. All right, here's a good crash opportunity. Smack that rear up. Ooh, that was perfect. And that really left a dent in the rear. Can it still drive after that? It should because it's a front wheel drive and can just drag itself along. Although steering is all over the place. I can't even keep this thing in a straight line. So, yep, we're just going to crash into the wall. Okay. Well, here's a quick look at that big impact once again. And then here's a look at the damage to the front. And we'll go ahead and switch this up to the next configuration. This one is a 660cc supercharged, which has almost the same stats as the turbo. So which is better? The turbo or the supercharged? Well, the supercharged wins because it sounds better. So listen to the supercharger on this little itty bitty engine and tell me you don't love the way it sounds. As far as I'm concerned, that sounds beautiful. Especially considering the fact that that's a small 660cc engine that sounds so surprisingly good because you just hear a ton of supercharger. Alright, so let's do a little slow motion into these rocks. And what is it going to do? Is it going to crash or is it going to fly? A little bit of both. Mostly flying though. Oh, we're going to fly over the rails. <laughs> Come on. Clear it. Oh, just barely clearing it. And now we're into the water. That... I did not actually see coming. That was a little bit of a mistake by me. I didn't plan to get in the water, but there we are. And hey, you can see just how tiny a 660cc engine is. It is tiny. And then the hood closes blocking it. Fine. Okay, be that way. So bringing it back up to the road. And next up, we got the step up from the turbo. That is the Turbo Sport. So the engine performance, pretty much the same, but it's got the sport suspension setup and then also the sport hood. Something about hoods like this on little cars, I absolutely love. It's just so adorably vicious. Like if you see a baby lion, he looks adorable, the little kitty witty, and then he takes a big fat bite out of a zebra. It's like, oh, he's adorable, but also very vicious. I guess I should have made it lion colored instead of red. Then that would have made even more sense. So what animals are cute but vicious that are red? A lion covered in zebra blood. Ha! can't stop me from making dumb but this wall it can stop my car Ooh, wow that was a perfect collision it hit so centered and you can see there's a ton of damage to the shape of the vehicle and also quite a bit on the inside which actually we haven't really looked at yet so let's get this guy off of the crash site go to the next configuration and we'll take a look at the interior so next up we have the Super Turbo X, except it's not. I'll explain that in a second, but first, and if we pop into the inside here, you can see this one does have a roll cage in it, but the interior isn't stripped down. It has all the same things as before. And these really interesting gauges are not the normal gauges that would come with the car. These are special custom ones that I think are awesome. I absolutely love when you have a tachometer and it just gives you a big fat number like 8,000. And it gives you all kinds of other information too, engine temperature, speed, fuel and then it even has a gps built right into the dash that is cool and you can see the interior is not fully stripped down but it's mostly stripped down so let's pop to the outside and drive this around and like i said this is not the vehicle it's supposed to be it's actually the next one in the list which is the 660 cc ird which is a special track day version that has a ton of power this thing makes like 200 horsepower it's crazy which is also why I'm bouncing off the walls a little bit because it's so easy to go so fast. But the steering is messed up, so let's just go ahead and finish it off, get some bumps going. How are you going to drive after that? Probably not. No matter what, I'm going to reset it. So, 
that's what it looks like and then we'll freshen them up so you can see some of the other changes on the outside so it's got a cool little carbon fiber wing on the rear and it also has a carbon fiber hood and the carbon fiber front splitter it's got carbon fiber everywhere my man this thing is carbon fibered up and it's a real serious race car so let's go ahead and do some real serious driving with it and it kind of feels fitting to do real serious driving but going through really tight corners like this although this is a dead end isn't it yep <laughs> YBR went the wrong way. All right, just sneak on by. This is not what you're supposed to do with a track day car, probably damaging the suspension in the process. So we'll just freshen it up real quickly. And I have a real simple goal. I want to get over 100 miles per hour. I don't know exactly where we're going to do this because there are a lot of curves in this road, but if I see an opportunity, I'm going to take it. And thankfully, this car does have all wheel drive. So it's really fun to fling it into these corners, assuming the transmission works the way you expect it to. I think this is definitely one of the ones where you'd want to use actual manual mode on the transmission to get full control over it for maximum fun, but automatic mode with the manual is going to work hopefully good enough. So let's go ahead and see, can we get to 100 miles per hour through here? We got a curve coming up, but we're at 90, come on, keep going, don't quit on me. 98, 100, -ish, 100, 100, that's 100 cleanly, and 110 even, and then we're just smashing into a wall because I wasn't looking at all at where I was going. How about another wall? Sure, why not? All of the walls we shall crash into. And there goes my front bumper. Strong car, though. Even after all those bumps, it held up. We did, however, lose a wheel, which is sad. And before we take a look at the next version, let's go ahead and change up maps. So how about we head over to West Coast, USA? And now I'm going to show you the most unusual engine option for this vehicle. This is the 658cc rotary. So there is a rotary engine option. And I was curious, if this is all-wheel drive, with a rotary engine what does it actually look like under the hood and it is straight up the weirdest looking engine i have ever seen because it's just so strange not only to see a single rotor rotary engine but it's also going left to right instead of front to back and i love you just look at this side of the engine it's like what in the world is this if you don't know what rotary engines are you're just like huh it just looks so hilariously weird in this car and just for comparison options, why don't we go ahead and grab one of the regular engine versions. This one has the 650cc, so it's a little bit bigger engine. And you see it's a normal engine in a normal car, unlike the weird looking rotary. Slap the hood back on and then let's go for a drive. And one thing I've actually been avoiding a little bit is showing you how easily you can tip this vehicle if you want to. So watch this. With this simple maneuver of pumping into the curb, yep, we tipped over, but we land on our wheels and we can keep driving. Also, I do like that there's a special wing on the rear of this one. I guess this is more of a spoiler than a wing. And then also it does say rotary on the rear, so everybody knows you got a rotary engine. But they also probably know based on the fact that it sounds a bit like a weed whacker, but also a bit like the world's best sounding weed whacker. If you can't laugh at rotary engines, you can't love them. Anyways, let's go for a big flight and probably destroy this thing 70 miles per hour up into the air. And ooh, maybe the roof will take the impact. Oh, landing on its wheels, it wants to drive. Is it gonna drive? It looks like it just might. And look at the damage we got in this thing. The whole top has just been completely caved in, but I don't think it's gonna really slow its driving capabilities down. We got a really lucky landing there where it only affects the way the vehicle looks. And yeah, the way it drives is not that badly damaged. It is pulling a bit, but it's not a lot. We can work with that. And we are already going fast enough to do our next crash, so I just gotta find the best place to do it. Maybe we'll try to hop a curb and see if we can still flip it over easily. I think with the smashed roof, it probably has a much lower center of gravity. Yeah, it didn't flip that time. Well, it didn't flip the way I expected it to, but somehow we ended up on our roof. I think we can keep driving though if we get back onto its wheels. Oh, come on, Rotary, let's go. Let's go, Rotary, don't quit. Rotaries, don't quit quit they just keep on going and again accelerating pretty decently although it is putting out a lot of smoke i think that's just the coolant burning off so eventually the engine will overheat once it runs out of coolant but we still got coolant so how about a rear end impact right into that barrier is that gonna stop it let's see maybe a little bit it does feel a little unusual but it's driving rotary don't quit that is my catchphrase for this car. Okay, rotary don't quit, but rear suspension do quit when you do a collision like that, and it's just a little too hard to drive it anymore. So here's one final look at all the damage we put this vehicle through. But it did such an impressive job. I am so happy for it. 
Next up, we're going to go to the other rotary powered version. Except this one would not be a production vehicle. The other one would be a rare limited edition vehicle. This one's just straight up a race car made from the factory. So it has a turbocharged rotary engine running at like 20 PSI a boost. And with the regular rotary, our stats were pretty similar to the 660cc turbo and supercharged versions. It had 59 horsepower and 63 foot-pounds of torque. This one goes to a whole nother level. 239 horsepower, 151 foot-pounds of torque. This thing has a very serious engine on it. This is not a street car. This is a car made for racing. You can tell by the engine and the roll cage. And this is not exactly what it's made for, but it's having a good old time doing some flying and crashing and now a little bit of rolling as well. Is it going to land on its wheels? No. Oh, no. I guess this car is trash because it's trying to go into a trash bin. I didn't think it was trash. I thought it was a pretty good car. How strange of you. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next configuration. And at this point, we've covered all the factory versions because the Turbo Rotary was like a factory race car. So now we're going to be taking a look at the custom configurations. And the first of those is called the Custom, which is a very fitting name for the first custom configuration we're taking a look at. And right off the bat, you're going to notice this thing drives different because not only does it have an upgraded engine, it was converted to be just rear wheel drive all the factory versions are either front wheel drive or all wheel drive when you get a rear wheel drive version it's definitely a lot less stable adding to the fact that this thing has about 125 horsepower it's very easy for you to accidentally slide it just like that thankfully it does have a roll cage so you can roll it around land on your wheels and keep on driving like nothing at all happened i'm actually surprised how clean that flip was. That was a really nice flip. Don't ask me to do it again though. Here, tell you what, I'll do a different kind of flip. We're gonna hit the barrier here and see what happens. So flip. Oh, ooh, that was actually kind of clean until it went completely upside down. And normally the rear axle braking isn't gonna be the end of the world, except it is on this one since it is just rear wheel drive. Here's a look at the damage. The roll cage did its job and it held the shape of the vehicle very well so the occupants would hopefully be safe. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the Drift Pig. So once again, we have another rear wheel drive version and this actually makes more power than the Custom because it has a fancy motorcycle engine swapped in. So it has about 140 horsepower and more interestingly, it does rev to 13,000. Now, if you had asked me to make this into a drift car, this is one of the few situations where I would put all-wheel drive into it. This thing just has such a short wheelbase and it's such a small vehicle overall, it's very easy to accidentally overdo it on the drifts, which is why all-wheel drive would be nice because if you overdo it, the front wheels can kind of pull you through it. So I'm being very, very careful with the drifts because I could just easily just do a little too much like this and there you go. You spin it out, but the good news is, also since it's such a small compact vehicle, you spin it out, and then you can kind of continue driving along super cleanly like that. New idea for a kind of race. It's a combination of drift and regular racing. And what you got to do is you got to do four 360s as you go around the track wherever you want. Someday that's going to be a real racing thing and it's going to be magnificent. Speaking of magnificent, how about some magnificent damage to the vehicle? Are you going to land on your wheels? Let's find out. Yes. But, once again, rear drive shaft is broken, so he's not going anywhere. Thank you for the strength from the roll cage, though, keeping the occupant safe. So there's the damage. And now, we're going to do something dumb that doesn't directly involve the car. So the next version we have is the front-wheel drive track. But we're not on a track right now, so what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to show you the easiest way to transport this car. So first, you need to get a big old truck like the D35 V8 Crew Cab Dually. This is a nice long bed. That's what's important is that you have a long bed. <laughs> you see where this is going, don't you? So now to load it in, we could do the node grabber. We could teleport it in and use the map editor. But you know what? It's always nice when you find a natural way of loading the vehicle in. So if we get this ramp and we park the truck right in front of the ramp like so, it actually makes it super easy to load the car up. So we stop right here and then we'll go to the car. And if I did that dumb thing where I put a random clip at the start of the video, I would be like, this car is so small, I can literally fit it into the back of a pickup truck. And it can do a lot more than that. Find out all the things that it can do, 
in this video. Yep, the cute little cheese. Well, I don't know if I should call him little cheese anymore since he's green. You don't want green cheese. Well, maybe Dr. Seuss would be okay with green cheese. Anyways, little cheese fits perfectly in the bed of the truck and it's very easy to drive it along. Although I have noticed it seems like a lot of the time it'll get stuck inside of the truck so it's actually too easy to drive it and you can't get it out when you get to the destination. We'll see what happens though because we'll be getting to the racetrack shortly and I'm taking a kind of chaotic path where it's like half off road, half on road. Who cares? It's stable. I don't have to worry about staying on the road, hopefully. Although I will stay on the road here. We could try to go straight through right there. I'm almost certain that would just flip the truck. That's a little too dangerous. Even if I didn't have a car in the bed, it would still flip it over. So there is the racetrack. You can just barely make it out. And I want to put the car into the racetrack in a fun way if it's not stuck. Although it looks stuck, so I don't think this is going to work. But the idea is simple. We become the car and then we drive out of the truck. So I'm going to get a straightaway, get the truck floor in it, and then we're going to freeze physics, go to the car, and then I'm just going to try to back it out of here. Alright, it's not backing out, so let's go to manual mode, go to reverse by force, and it's not reversing, it's just revving the engine. So that is unfortunately not going to work. So the easiest way to roll it out the truck is to just cheat it a little bit and do that. Ta-da! It rolled out the truck. That's super cheating. So anyways, with the front wheel drive track version, we don't have an engine as big as you would expect. It only makes 68 horsepower and 66 foot-pounds of torque, but the suspension is very well sorted. And if you want to, you can even cut through the corners if you forget how tight the following corner is, like I just did there. So yeah, even with only 68 horsepower, you can easily overshoot a corner, apparently. <laughs> that was just bad driving. Who am I kidding? I do the corner proper like. Ah, oh, yes, look at that. A little bit of over rev risk. That means you're downshifting hard. So although it works for the track, it's definitely best suited for very tight technical courses. Like, this would probably be an excellent autocross vehicle. For something like this, we have a really long straightaway though, everybody would be passing you up here because we are just now reaching 100 miles per hour and that's with the help of a downhill. So we'll do a little crash into the tires, which it really bounced off of hard and front right axle is broken. So we are not going to get any driving going, although we can look like we're driving. Like it really looks like we're driving, but I don't think we can really do anything. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much done. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the damage and then on to the next configuration. The next one is going to be the track day full edition. So the other one was like a pretty ordinary track day vehicle. This one goes a little bit more crazy. So again, this is a rear wheel drive vehicle and it has these crazy fenders on the rear that make it a little bit wider. And then it has 127 horsepower and 92 foot pounds of torque. So this one splits the difference between the IRD full-on racing cars we saw earlier and the stock variants because this is like a normal person who gets a car and does some reasonable upgrades to it to make it a decent track car and the other ones are just straight up this is factory back so we can spend tons of money making a ton of power from a small engine if it blows up it blows up overall the handling on this is the best out of all of the rear wheel drive versions there is I would say and you can see it has a very stiff suspension setup that can sometimes almost flip it over if you really nail those apexes like I was trying to do. All right, here's another small little crash. And it didn't do that much damage, but when you crash or track day, your day is over, even if it's only a minor crash like that. And now, unfortunately, there is not a drag version. If there was, I'd be taking it to the drag strip. So the next closest thing to that is the Minicorn. And yes, the name is a joke on Hoonicorn. At least I assume it is, because why else would it be called that? So on this one, we have the same base engine you saw on the Drift Pig, but this time it makes even more power because it has some real serious turbo going on. So that makes 260 horsepower and 120 foot-pounds of torque. So lots of power, not that much torque, which makes sense considering it does rev to 13,000 RPM still. And I gotta try to find a car that'll hopefully be close to the same performance, so we can't do a straight up drag car, but maybe something like a fast factory version of the i-series, the TT Sport Evolution, that might be close. So let's see how well this goes. My main concern is I want it to be a close race. If I lose, oh well. If I win, heck yeah. As long as it's a close race, then is it a close race? I don't see them, well, it's not terribly unfair, but I'm get an easy victory with a time of it looked like 11.6 that's actually 
pretty good, especially considering how little power this car makes. Although you do see, it feels like it was really getting topped out at the end of the quarter mile because I'm trying to floor it more and more and it wasn't accelerating that much before it got to the big jump of doom. And here goes the roll cage doing its job. We're rolling. Hold the car together. Thank you, roll cage. That was a very nice job. So here's a look at the damage. The doors have flown off. There's the turbos just sticking out. Well, they always stick out, but they're sticking out even more than normal. And just for fun, we're going to make my own custom drag version. And we're going to use the rotary engine for this. So everybody in New Zealand is cheering because one of the weird things about New Zealand is they absolutely seem to love using rotary engines in drag cars and I love you guys for that. So I'm making two small changes to this car. I added the CVT transmission. I know it sounds terrible but it'll probably work and also I'm adding a big bottle of nitrous. The nitrous it's obvious why I added that because nitrous means more power. And I'm making sure it comes on immediately with as much power as possible. And then I also want to tune the turbo so it puts out as much PSI as it possibly can. And the reason I added the CVT is because we don't have to shift. So I think for a car like this, instead of having to shift through six separate gears, it might actually be faster with the CVT transmission. And I completely blew it launching the CVT, but thankfully it didn't actually matter because the engine just blew up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep lowering the amount of boost that I'm getting from the nitrous until it doesn't blow up. So we'll go to 400 kilowatts. You know what? There needs to be a mod that changes the kilowatts to horsepower on the nitrous. Because I'm like, how many kilowatts is a horsepower? I don't know. 300 now? We'll see what that does. And I think 300 kilowatts is like 400 horsepower-ish. Don't quote me on that. It might be the other way around. I know one of them is like 30% more than the other. All right, this one looks like it's actually working. We're gonna uh, almost make it to the finish line. We got farther than last time before the engine blew up, so let's go only 50 less than the last attempt. So we're gonna go with 250 kilowatts. That's still a lot of added power from the nitrous. And let's see, will it make it all the way to the finish without the engine blowing up? I know it's threatening to blow up, but it just has to hold together for a quarter mile. The coolant's overheating, but it will make it. And it really feels like it's moving good. So we're going to race again the same car that's already there just because it's convenient. And if it's fast enough, heck, we can go and actually race a drag car with this and see how well it competes. So here we go. Come on. Okay, launching a CVT is a little bit unusual. I guess I'm going to have to just drop it from neutral in the drive to get the perfect launch. But what time do we get? Whoa! 9.245 at 157 miles per hour and that's only because we were bouncing off the rev limiter there that is crazy now just for comparison purposes let's try the exact same setup but this time we're going to use a more traditional transmission and see if the cvt was actually beneficial in any way whatsoever and if this time is better, that could just be because I had a bad launch with the CVT and I'll have to do another test. Thankfully, launching a manual transmission car is pretty easy. You just rev it up and go like so. And ooh, you can really feel all those shifts kind of slowing you down because the turbo spools down. So it's got to spool back up and all those things build up. And it slows it down a bit, doesn't it? Because we had a time of 9.995, which is basically 10 seconds. So for this specific car where you got to really spool up the turbo between the shifts, the CVT works excellently. All right, just for laughs, we're going to do a real drag race now. We're going to go against actual drag car, and we're going to see, can I stand a chance? We're going to go back to the CVT, and I'm going to make one more small change to the vehicle, because we can't change the actual CVT ratios, but we can change the final drive ratio. So we're going to put these to like 4.71, and that'll give us a little bit more top speed, so hopefully we can beat a legitimate drag car with a 658 cc engine with a turbo so big the turbo itself is probably bigger than the engine and oh man it is destroying the drag car with all oh, i couldn't even read the time how fast we were going 8.695 at 173 miles per hour that is ludicrous because that is legitimately just as fast if not faster than the drag car even if they were both being raced by equally competent drivers and that's with a cvt transmission on it although i really do think the cvt was beneficial although it can really literally only do one run and then the engine is just toasting itself look at the temperature gauge it is completely topped out i'm gonna just try to like cruise it and with the nitrous off try to just get some air through it hopefully cool it off some 
I don't really think this is working. It's still overheating, isn't it? <laughs> piston rings damaged. <laughs> you can't damage piston rings on a rotary engine. Do you mean apex seals damaged? Because if that's the case, oh no, that's bad. That's very bad. Anyways, that's my custom drag version we just made. Not an official version, but hey, it should be. In fact, you know what? What the heck? If I'm saying it should be a, a custom version, let's just go ahead and save it. We're going to call it the drag version. And yes, the Pixar's going to have a damaged car now. I don't care. <laughs> All right, so back over here. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the next version. So this one, I, I'm all messed up because all the car's positions moved, actually. Uh, the next one we're going to be taking a look at is the Okaido Show Car. And on this one, we got a bunch of show car style modifications to it. My favorite of which is the wheels. It has some turbo fan looking wheels on it. I've always loved the way turbo fans look. And these ones look really good because the red matches the red stripe on the vehicle. But we got all kinds of other parts all over it on the front. It even says the name on it. And then if we to rip the hood off, you can see it has a nice big four cylinder engine. And now would be a good time to mention there's actually a lot of neat customizability you can get with the engine. So temporarily, let me remove the special hood. And then I'm going to just show you some of the cool things you can do with the engine. So first off, you can change the cylinder cover. Right now it's body colored. So that means actually if you change the color of the body, it'll change that. But you can also make it carbon fiber colored. Or you can just make it stock, which is red, which actually looks better than the other one if you ask me because it matches the stripes. Then we can also change the intake manifold, so now it's a really fancy one, but then you can also get the stock one, which is more like what you would see on a production vehicle, which is going to choke the engine. My engine needs to breathe. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, we can go to the pistons, and we can put forged pistons in it just because we can. It's the show car. Why not? Here's one of the more interesting things, though. We have the wires, and we can give colorable wires, so you can actually change the color of those wires. And to do that, you just change this color here, and if we make it red, you'll notice it also makes the roll cage red as well. And again, that actually looks cool because it matches the stripes. And then the last part that we can modify in the engine, got to open it back up because it closed itself, is the intake. So right now it has a cone intake. But this is really neat. You also have the option for a honeycomb intake. Like that's completely unnecessary because they do basically the same thing, but it's cool. And then you also have the stock intake as well, which is just a normal basic intake. And then of course, turbo time if you wanted to. But I've really messed this thing up. Let's go ahead and get a normal version once more and then how about we see what happens if we pick a color on this thing like make it nice and green and red is it gonna be like Christmas let's see the color did nothing all right forget the colors we don't need colors oh here's another fun thing with this car on a really sticky surface like a drag strip you can do this <laughs> like that looks so absolutely unnatural doesn't it the car just flips over out of almost nowhere and that's just because the drag strip is so tacky. Once we get to a normal road, it doesn't do that. But man, drag strips are crazy. Look, just bouncing it. Whoop, there we go, flipping again. Just <laughs> a little ridiculous, don't you think? All right, so freshen the car up, turn the headlights on because we can, and let's go for a little bit of a realistic drive. And if you're wondering, are the turbo fans actually necessary? No, the car's so lightweight, you're really not gonna cook the brakes unless you're actually trying to, it feels like. Ooh, pop the wheel. What? I was nailing apexes. I don't know what you mean, pop the wheel. How ridiculous. Gotta pop both of them now so it's symmetrical, right? That nah, didn't work. The funny thing is, you can get so close to the corners, and the car is so small, you accidentally are just completely off the course before you know it. It's like, whoops, how did I do that? Alright, so the last one we're gonna take a look at, it's gonna be a little cheaty to get to where I want to go. So here's a quick look at the damage. Nothing too interesting there, just normal damage it seems like. And what I want to do is I just want to go a little bit flying over to here. And now we can try out the rally version. Yep, there's even a rally version for this car. And it says rally boy! Like nappy boy, maybe. I don't know. So this one has the highest revving engine of all. It basically revs to 14,000 RPM. Obviously, it's going to have all-wheel drive, and it makes about 100 horsepower and 55 foot-pounds of torque. Again, when you rev high, it's easier to make power than it is torque, and it does not like the bumpy sections. It copes with the jumps pretty decently, but when you got like the washboard bumps, that's where it's going to struggle. Like right before this jump, we had a little bit of those bumps, and ooh, it gets a little sketchy. And that's just down to the fact that it's a small car, so it doesn't have the long wheelbase, which can kind of smooth out 
a washboard like setup like that it's just gonna hit every bump and you're gonna feel every one of them but overall it seems like it's doing a pretty good job aside from the fact that it somehow got damaged and it's smoking all over the place and i just rolled it over that's not the car's fault i just took that corner way too hot so can we do this jump uh, kind of cleanly just a little too slow to do them cleanly because of the stupid rolling over but this one will be good though i promise you here we go nice and easy yeah that was a good jump all right, next jump, make it nice and smooth. This one we gotta slow down just a touch and perfect. That is exactly what the rally version was designed for. I do feel like it's slowing down though. So can we make this jump? No, oh, yeah, we can make that jump. And here comes the washboard again. Oh, bouncing, you see, it just bounces you. And I, I even spun out a little bit. Oh, we lost the headlight at some point. Otherwise it did pretty good at holding up considering we did roll over. So now to finish up the video, Let's go ahead and do, you already know it, Leap of Death. Now, which version are we going to use for Leap of Death? You know what? We're going to use the Drag Edition. My homemade version is great for Leap of Death because it can fly down here. And if I wanted to, I could actually make it faster by increasing the nitrous because we don't need to last a whole quarter mile here. It's only like an eighth of a mile probably get to the end of the jump. <laughs> oh my goodness. This thing really flew. Uh, it was able to put down the power so surprisingly well. It is all-wheel drive after all, so that definitely helped in the dirt. And you saw how fast it was in the straight line, so that was amazing. It flew so far, and it's going to go into the water so easily. And that was without me adding the extra nitrous. I didn't even add the extra nitrous. Uh, we got to do a more normal jump as well with a normal version, because that was just ridiculous. So let's downgrade the vehicle. We're going to go with... Uh, how about a Japanese police version? Because that's the one you haven't got to see yet, actually. You see, it has a nice little Japanese police-style paint job on it. And then, of course, we have lights. We can turn them on. And also, we can turn on the siren. But I'm not going to because it gets annoying. We're just going to have just the lights. And then, up we go. A little bit of a spin. And now it's time for damage. Also, this one doesn't have a roll cage. So it's going to receive a lot more damage. And it's going to be a lot more fast. Yep, car is ruined. And there go my lights. They're flying off into the distance. Goodbye, police lights. It was nice knowing you for like five seconds. The good news is, or maybe it's bad news. The horn still works for the sirens. I don't think you can actually break the siren button. No matter how destroyed your car is, the sirens seem like they will always work. Even if we go into water, I'm pretty sure. Although I've never actually tested it. But I'm assuming... Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. It's fainter because it's underwater, but you definitely still hear it. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by measuring the dimensions of the car and comparing them to the COVID. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.